something surprisingly, unexpectedly, and instantaneously presents itself or is given to us in terms of an idea or a need that we might have. And so it's a moment of completion or fulfillment in a sense. Salutations! Welcome to Spiritual Blitherings, Philosophical Ponderings, and Everything Ramblings at the Hopeful Humanist Cafe. This is a Just Some Guy production, and I'm that guy, your host, Steve, the Hopeful Humanist. And I want to start by thanking Woodrow for that musically italicized introduction to the word of the day. Boomf. B-O-O-M-P-F. I invented this word, so <laughs> this episode is literally about a non-existent word. And playfully, I like to suggest that it is sponsored paradoxidationally. It's a word I invented with a tool available at uh, degrave.com where they fuse, com they make uh, a compound words by fusing words together. I have no idea what it means, but I liked it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's uh, sponsored paradoxidationally by the idea fostering creativity. Now that's fun. <laughs> I, I think that's fun. So I'm, I'm imagining that uh, today as we uh, come together, this might be a day that together we can imagine is Invent a Word Day. So welcome to Invent a Word Day. Um, we can possibly, by diving into such a fun activity, create inspiration to stand up to those difficult realities as we navigate this COVID-19 world. Creativity, I believe, is a an essential competency for the 21st century. I think that in terms of Gen Z and Gen Alpha, we need to figure out ways to help them nourish their creative juices and build that creative muscle so that we can stand up to those difficult challenges that we're facing in the modern world and, and find out-of-the-box solutions. So the the, the idea that there uh, is a paradoxidationally uh, a sponsorship for this episode. I would like to link to uh, episode 45, Fostering Creativity, Generation Alpha and Driverless Cars, and episode 27, Feeding and Extinguishing the Fire of dot dot dot. I'll have them in the show notes for a quick link access. But the idea is generally in terms of my mission for this uh, podcast. This is share resources that are free that people can put into their spiritual toolbox. But I, I also have a passion for exploring and, and diving into and, and fostering creativity. And so going back to the idea of this episode being sponsored by two previous ones, there are things that if we do them could feed the fire of creativity. And there are things that if we do them could extinguish the fire of creativity. And I'm thinking that by engaging in a playful creativity activity, we could possibly, by maybe just a degree, increase the level of creativity that we're dealing with in the moment. And that kind of sounds exciting to me. Uh, in terms of uh, some t-shirt ideas that might be connected to this episode, um, I, I can imagine on a t-shirt the idea uh, you know, written in, in uh, words, everybody has a book to write. I believe that to be true. I believe everybody has one book to contribute to the library archives of humanity that 
we all have a unique experience that uh, illuminates something incredible and helpful and that it can be shared and and it can be inspiring the other idea i had for a t-shirt was uh if the cosmic pronoun i t h in capital letters a picture of that being on a shirt a picture you know standing underneath the immensity of you know the sky above us on a starlit night and, and recognizing how small but yet how interconnected we are and when you when you look up it just doesn't seem to capture and you're like it's beautiful uh, i feel like there's something refer like reverent about this idea of it 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 beautiful um, some other words that i've kind of been playing around with and haven't fully constructed a, a definition as of yet for them would be altogether swish and, and druffle. Um, boomph is, is the word that I want to focus on and it can be differentiated and you can do a Google investigation to figure this out to get the details um, if you are so inclined. Um, but boomph, B-O-O-M-P-F is different than boomph, B-O-O-M-P, or boom, B O O M F. And my goal right now is through a snippet, clip it, collaborative creation uh, by working with Captain Jack and Danielson, come up for a come up with a definition for boom, and, and in a sense to make it real. <laughs> I guess in a sense it, it is real in my circle. Um, it, there, I have examples of what, what boomph looks like. And uh, now I'm, I'm trying to just fashion that definition. And I, I offered a thought at the very introduction before the uh, musical italicized uh, lead into the word um, by Woodrow. Uh, so Captain Jack and Daniel Sun, I, I invited them into the conversation. And um, especially with uh, Daniel Sun, I... I did share some um, other uh, interests in terms of exploring altogether swish and ruffle, but uh, the folks of this episode will be up beyond boom, and they're going to share some thoughts. And so I, I was struck with a question. Uh, it might seem like a, uh, a naive, naive, simple question, um, but you know sometimes we we, we just got to start where there seems to be an, an, an impulse. Um, in terms of trying to get at something. And so the, the question I was asking myself is, does a word only exist if it's found in the dictionary? And we can see that over time with advances in technology or when there's uh, new medicines created or different discoveries, to be able to capture the, uh, the unfolding reality of that moment, uh, new words come into the living language that we call English. Um, so the, the question being, does a word only exist if it exists in the dictionary or, right? Or is it possible with the, the wag of the tongue that we can socially construct together an idea and breathe into it life so that it's something that could be understood it's something that could be recognized and it's something that could be used. And for me, I believe boomph is, in fact, uh, a word that does not exist in the dictionary, but nonetheless is, is, is very real, at least in uh, my immediate circle, my immediate world. The, the fascination, I guess, of... Uh, creating a, a word i've always been interested in that but but recently because i'm 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 interested in kind of doing more research about generations and um, uh, differences and similarities i picked up uh, douglas coupland's book generation x which i read over 25 years ago like many other souls part of my generation and uh, I, I i was remembering back uh, i i 
found, as I was reflecting, I found myself drawn to um, that groundbreaking novel for a number of different reasons at the time. But, uh, and as it spoke to me in a different ways, one thing struck me. Uh, it was that there was um, the audacity of the young soul, the author, to pull out of his mind's eye ideas and thoughts and then thrust them into the margin of the story about the confusion of youth as uh, we as they stand on the cusp of adulthood. So like I just imagine that before this story, there was no such thing as a Mick job. Then suddenly he writes it and he makes it so it exists. It's real and it impacts the way a generation perceives itself, talks about itself, forges forward in an attempt to claim a space in this world. And, and I was thinking that, you know, you know, you too have that power. You too could create a word. I have that power. With the wave, not of the wand, with the wag of the tongue, we can declare things into existence. We can make, there are these things called speech acts, these utterances that come out of us. And uh, there's a certain kind called a declaration. And uh, in a sense, it's a form of magic. It's uh, This act can both be empowering and be fun. And, and I think it's especially empowering right now that when we find ourselves in trouble or difficult times with some creativity, boom, pff, there it is. And that is the idea behind Boom. It's it's that moment when you're recollecting something that happened a long time ago. Uh, it was an exciting moment. It was a, a time that struck a chord. It resonated. And I, I can imagine that perhaps someone is thinking about a past travel and that they were at an exotic place. They met a, a very interesting soul. They had some kind of experience. And that uh, as a person a number of years later is thinking about this, they turn around a corner and boom, pff, there the person is. And it's, it's strange and it's wonderful and it's sudden and it's, there's something that uh, feels like a completion of some sort has just happened in that moment. Uh, I, I think it's a close cousin, boomf, to serendipity. I like that. Um, but with all that, perhaps I should go back to this idea of uh, a McJob and at least define it. And the uh, definition that he has in the margins of the page are as such, McJob, a low pay, low prestige, low dignity, low benefit, no future job in the service sector, frequently considered a satisfying career choice by people who have never held one. Uh, before I leave the book, I just there's another word uh, that he um, invented, he created in uh, the margins on uh, page 85, and it's 101-ism. I like that one too. The tendency to pick apart often in minute detail, all aspects of life using half understood pop psychology as the tool. That's fascinating. So yes, uh, today I'm going to, with the help of my two spiritual brothers, try to come up with a solid concrete definition of what boomf is and to give it a little bit more substance in terms of the substance it already has in terms of my immediate world. I kind of want to bring it to life. And so uh, to do that, the first thing I'd like to share is a question uh, that I posed in a file that I made to um, Captain Jack and then segue immediately into uh, Captain Jack's answer. And at that point, uh, I'll join you once again as we get prepared for our introduction to a thought from Danielson. So here's a question for you, Captain Jack. Today I'm interested in the declaration. So your philosophy, logic, have you done any philosophy of language? 
We talked about Searle in the past, like the Speech Act and the Declaration. This meeting is adjourned. You know, the minute you say something, it it becomes so it becomes it's 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 enacted and, and enforced in reality. So I like this idea of uh, people inventing words, like uh, Douglas Coupland did with the Generation X, where he, in the margins of his story of his narrative, he jots down this idea, Mick Job, and then all of a sudden, a generation seemed to become galvanized around the ideas and and the story told in this book. They can relate to it becomes a form of identity and he does it at uh, the wave of uh, of the tongue with a wave of the tongue boom a declaration is declared and um, something comes into existence and now we have the mick job boom there it is and that's my um declaration my my tongue waving declaration boom and i'm trying to define it is it a noun is it an adverb what is it jacko what is boom? Hello? Hello? Is this on? I was like trying to push that and then I got the record button. Boom! And now it's going. <laughs> so what is boom? I think it's an onomatopoeia, Steve. I think it's an onomatopoeia. Um, because it's... I would, I would imagine boom is the sound of something being put down. Right? I would take boomf to be a sound because when it's put down, there it is. And I think it can be used in many situations, right? Because you said, well, is it a noun, a verb, an adjective? It's a tough one. What does it mean? I guess we'd have to define it. So boomf is the sound of the what? The non-physical being made real? Is that it? The idea becoming tangible or creating a real existence something like that right steve okay jacko i i enjoyed that i i guess my takeaway is this idea about the non-physical becoming real i i talked to woodrow about that and he added that you know not only is it like a kind of a a, a recognition a realization that, that something is kind of manifesting itself. He says, but it's, it, it's kind of like the emotion of the uh, of the incredible. The emotion of the incredible that uh, something suddenly happens and it it creates this this uh, sense of excitement and, and perhaps even awe. So is it is it possible, Captain Jack, that we are one step closer to you know, I've I've created a word. I'm attempting to define it. I've thinking, I, I'm thinking you've given me some good food for thought. So from my understanding, I went to a do-it-yourself site, and it shared that the Oxford Dictionary contains over 600,000 different definitions, but that more are added each year as language uh, changes and and it grows. And the thought that maybe I'm able to, uh, with your help and Danielson's help, uh, come up with a definition uh, for this word, boomf, that it might be something that could become a part of a, a greater collective vocabulary. That's pretty exciting. So uh, I will say thank you very much, Captain Jack. Um, I look forward possibly at some time to you sharing with me um, your own uh, thoughts uh, about a, a word that maybe you've created and you, you can uh, define um, in a do-it-yourself fashion. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking uh, I want to build upon this, Daniel Sun. And I, you know, I've, I've put the thought out there. I've, I've recruited some help from you in terms of maybe coming up with a solid definition for boom. So uh, what direction do you think we should go? On to lexical matters. So boom, I have been ruminating on that. Boom, an encounter 
with a person that is preempted by a thought or foreshadowing of that person. Is that the gist of it? An encounter with someone, uh, with a per- I think person is better than someone. An encounter with a person that is, I was thinking presaged, but presaged usually means uh, something negative, like a foreboding. A lot of the, most of those words seem to be uh, like foreshadowing. Preempt might work. Preempted by a thought or memory of said person. Now, as far as part of speech, I guess it, it would it's would have to be determined by its usage. Uh, for example, the word peace, uh, the peace, the word peace with an A in it, uh, can like a lot of nouns be an adjective as well. Ted Stevens said. Get, let's get on the peace train. Uh, whereas world peace it would is uh, an unimaginable thing. Peace there as a noun. So, boomf. So if one were to have a boomf experience. Uh, so I was walking down Bank Street uh, thinking about uh, Randy, who I haven't seen in years. And I knew that he lived... And I remember him living just off Bank Street. And as I was thinking about Randy, I turned the corner and I had a boomf moment. Or I'm thinking you you were, and then boomf, there he was. So in that kind of instance, uh, it's kind of more like a, an interjection almost. And then uh, it also has uh, some automatic peak, uh element. Not sure. I don't know if that's in your lexicon. Uh, onomatopoeia from grade 10 English class uh, is a, a word that sounds uh, like its meaning. Coo, the baby cooed, or ouch. Ouch as a word expressing pain. So it sounds like the exclamation one would have after putting his or her hand over a fire, his or her, his or her is, is, uh, I'm, I'm now teaching, uh, pronouns in grammar class and, and the whole thing is, is upended. So I, I actually sent my, uh, publishing rep for our textbook saying, uh, we got to do something about this. This is, uh, this is all wrong. This living language that is English is uh, uh needs some reworking because you can't say his or her anymore because that's exclusive and it's not uh, accounting for non-binary persons uh so i mean what is what the convention has gone to is instead of his or her you use the plural non-gender specific they or them but, uh, yeah, back to boomf. Uh, you mentioned another one. Sorry, so back to boomf. So I'm thinking, as a noun, it would have to be, I had a boomf yesterday. I was walking down Bank Street. I was thinking of Randy, and I had a boomf, meaning that I saw him. And, and so that encounter was preempted in my mind by the thought or memory of Randy, for example. Let me know what you think of that. The other word, uh, alternus wish, um, I'm thinking. Uh, Forgive me for... uh, And then uh, I can't... Druffle. Druffle was the other one. But uh, it made me think of uh, going back to... I took... Uh, Old English uh, for my English lit degree. Old English, so Beowulf. Uh, Beowulf is old. It was written. We're talking like between 500 and 800 A.D. And so it's uh, a complete, uh, completely different language than English. And uh, yeah, it it was a really fun course that we had to uh, translate and memorize passages. But uh, 
what I really liked in Beowulf, and this uh, made me think of Beowulf when you mentioned Alterna Swish. Uh, so uh, the poet of Beowulf used a lot of uh, compound words. Technically, they were called kennings. Kennings. Uh, so they were, uh, an example would be, instead of saying the sun, he would, the poet would say the sky candle. Or instead of saying the sea, he would say the whale road. Or, um, what's the other one? Oh, instead of blood, he would say battle sweat. So, like, I remember reading and I'm like, wow, this is really cool. I mean, it's, it's, it evokes the image so much more than just saying sea, the whale road, or the, the sky candle as, as the sun or, battle sweat. <laughs> anyway, so I was thinking of that with Alternus Wish, and I was thinking, you know, what if I were to come up with, uh, I, I was thinking, uh, I can't remember it now, uh, Drift, uh, uh, goodness, I, uh, oh, I, I was thinking Drift Lift, Drift Lift. So I've I'm, I'm been sitting at my screen for far too long. I need a break. So I go move away from the, the computer and I focus on my breathing and I drift away and that lifts me, a drift lift, something like that. I had another couple other ones, but I uh, can't seem to remember. But uh, yeah, it's um, my, uh, my word uh, or addition to the lexicon of late is the COVID sigh. <laughs> um, just kind of exasperation with the situation. Thank you, Daniel Sun. As I take it all in, I find myself inclined to do something like this. It, it feels like with the ring of a bell, I find myself at a hocus pocus moment and that our creative think tank collaboration has culminated into something fruitful. There appears to be an altogether swish consensus about possible definitions for boomp that stretches from interjection to onomatopoeia and includes a discussion about adjectives and nouns. And, and in the process, we got some extras like drift lift and the COVID sigh. And let me say, I think uh, uh, this side, the COVID side is a side uh, too many of us relate to and that, that more than ever, it m provides reason to engage in and satisfy the, the creative need that we have as human beings and, and the impulse. And, and in the process, perhaps it will even allow us to change the world, even even just a little bit. So with that, I'd like to suggest it's your turn. Please accept this as an invitation to create a word, define it, and to bring it to life in your many everyday conversations. I'm, I'm so interested in what this might look like, how it might unfold, that uh, if, you, if you feel compelled or so inclined, please send me an email to hopefulhumanistcafe at gmail.com to share your word, the word that you created. And also in the process, uh, as I'm always interested in sharing resources with other people that are free, that are on the internet, um, if you have any ideas about a really uh, cool tool that you think could be helpful for others to consider whether or not they'll put it in their spiritual toolbox, please share it. Additionally, uh, this episode has been focused on nurturing the creative impulse. So if you have any ideas about different creative activities, I look forward to hearing about them as well. And uh, I'm, I'm more than open to and more than pleased to acknowledge any generous symbiotic contribution in upcoming episodes. 
So thank you for joining me for a blithering moment. Peace, take care, be well and share. In an effort to leave on a creative note, I pass it to Woodrow uh, and, and invite him to wrap things up with a full circle farewell. Peace. Mm-hmm.